of this episode, we're gonna be talking about the new uh, feature in Rails 72 that enqueues your background jobs after a database transaction has finished committing and successfully saving your records to the database. This can cause problems where your background jobs can't find records because they're running too quickly. And you've probably run into this before and realized, oh, I have to actually do a little bit different of a setup. Um, but now Rails 7.2 is going to, out of the box, take care of this uh, issue for you, which is awesome. So we are also sponsored this episode with Tuple, and Colin and I are gonna use Tuple to pair program on this. We're gonna look at how Rails used to work, upgrade to Rails 7.2, enable this new feature, and uh, see how all of that works using Tuple to share our screens together and work remotely. Um, Tuple uh, is our favorite tool for pair programming remotely. We've been using it for at least five years now and it has just been a staple of our workflow. If you wanna try Tuple yourself, you can use code GORAILS at checkout to get 50% off your first three months. Now let's dig into the episode. What's up, Colin? Hello, sir. I just figured I'd hit you up on Tuple. I figured it'd be a lot easier to just pair over video and do this and like continue to send mex messages back and forth. So it's always easier to use Tuple. Um, yeah. We were talking about the new feature in Rails 7.2 that delays yeah. jobs until the end of a transaction for you automatically, which is pretty cool. Yes, because there is an issue that I'm sure a lot of us have hit in the past and probably still continue to hit. And I've got some code here that we can walk through. Oh, uh, yeah, here. Uh, can you, if you got it, can you share? We can check it out together. Yes. Let me share my screen with Tuple. There you go. Can you see it? Good to go. Awesome. Yep, um, there it is. Looks familiar. So can you tell us what the issue with this code is? Yeah, uh, that code is not going to actually commit an ID to the database so that the, the job won't be able to query uh, for the ID that's returned uh, here for this user when you're creating the user or attempting so, to create the user. So what happens is we create the user in the database, we queue up a job, we sleep for a second to kind of show off this issue. Yeah. Um, and we're doing stuff in parallel now. Like, uh, you know, one thing is creating the record and the other is queued up a job and running independently so it can run that job as soon as it gets it. Right. And the problem is the new user record is not queryable until after the sleep happens for a second and this end uh, in the transaction that happens inside of Rails that we don't ever even really see. Um, right, yeah. It has to be finished before we can query that, yep, that user exactly. from, from our background jobs like Sidekick. Um, so why don't we go uh, try this out in the terminal and see see what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to run bundle exec sidekick over here and create a new user in our uh, Rails console. And everything looks fine on this side. Users <laughs> created, enqueued the welcome job, did our commit for our transaction, get user number 29. Looks fine to me, man. But. Yep. If you uh, look right here. Yep. There it is. Serialization error. Couldn't find user with ID 29, but we sure as heck have user number 29. And what's weird um, is that it reruns the job because it failed the first time and it's performing the welcome job with those arguments um, and it reruns it and it works just fine this time. Actually, yep. this is the one we're looking at. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's down here. Yeah. User number 29. We've been testing and have other old jobs in there. Um, yep. And so this worked the second time around, uh, which seems strange, right? Like it didn't yep. work the first time. Which um, is probably what most people see with this bug in production. You know, yeah. they're like, it works eventually, but it always fails the first time and don't know why. Which happens because that automatic retry with Sidekick uh, is exponentially backing off. So like, wait a second and then two seconds and four seconds, so or, on, you so know, on, yep. it, right. it grows. And so eventually it will run again at the time that the commit has finished in the rails transaction. So, uh, what's really neat is if we upgrade to rails seven, two currently in beta three status, 
and we run bundle, um, this is gonna update our Rails application, but it's not gonna fix it automatically because we're upgrading. So we either need to uh, upgrade to the defaults of 7.2, or we can add config, uh, active job, and queue after transaction commit equals default. And this yep. configuration option is what's going to tell active job to use that new functionality. So it's, they're trying to keep it backwards compatible. So if your code uh, didn't expect this change, it's disabled by default if you're upgrading, but it is there when you uh, start a rail seven, two app um, and will work. And uh, you know, we didn't talk about it, but uh, oftentimes, in our code, we will oh, make sure that this, we use uh, this. Yeah. yeah. So without this fix uh, or this configuration change, um, we were always using after create commit, but it's easy enough to forget. And you're just thinking about like, I need to do this thing after the record's created. So I say after create and I forget there's a difference yeah. between the two. Um, Which also uh, kind of makes me think like, how many reports of this issue did have they gotten to where finally they were like, you know what? Okay, we're just gonna I bet come up with something lot. here. You know, yeah. I bet. So, um, with those new changes, we can open up the Rails console and try this one more time. We'll say user dot create, and you'll notice it enqueued the welcome job, and it waited for a second, and then actually we saw the sidekick connect to Redis after the commit. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Rails is a logger for this, uh, must actually write the log immediately, um, even though it's actually being added to a callback to really do the execution later. Right. Maybe they'll change that logging so it happens more on the time um, that it actually gets run or whatever. But mm -hmm. this time we get the job, performing welcome job for user number 30, and it just succeeds the first time because it actually waited to right. run. And you'll notice if we say user.create, there's nothing happening over here and for a uh, one second before it, it runs it. So it runs. Yep. this little configuration option that you can enable in Rails 7.2 if you're upgrading from an older version is all you have to do to make sure that your uh, transactions like this, uh, when you're creating a user internally in active record, it creates a transaction so if you have any associated records or whatever, they can all be rolled back together. Right, and yeah. we don't even see that. You know, We don't write transactions explicitly unless we really need to for some reason. Totally. When you create a record in Rails, an active record, it's gonna do the transaction for you automatically, which- Yeah, and just to like further point out too, like, like you yeah. didn't have to change that code at all. You know, yeah, it's, it's still- Yeah, it's exactly the same. This is the same, you know, which is yep. awesome. Yeah, and so that's, you know, a configuration option that if you upgrade, like running the Rails app update command will give you this new configuration option, but you have to manually enable it in, the, on, yep. in the initializer um, or put it here in your environments or application RB. Um, but that'll do the trick for you, which is pretty cool. And this doesn't really apply to everything because like if you were using solid queue or probably good job and they're writing to the same database uh, or whatever, then it's gonna be, creating the job as part of the transaction anyways. So you're creating a user record and a job record for solid queue. So this won't do anything different for you. That's actually just part of the way that the queue adapter works for those. Works. Sure. Um, but this is using Redis, which is a separate database. So that's part of the problem. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought this really was cool. great. Great uh, quality of life improvement that's almost invisible to you as the developer, which is part of the beauty of it, which is why we say, use that's Rails. Like the magic, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. Um, definitely wanted to share that. And, you know, we still would recommend using the explicit after, um, after create commit here for those types of things, yep. just to be you know, transparent. And this will also be backwards compatible with older versions of Rails. Um, but at least you don't have to worry about it as much going forward. I think that's absolutely. Cool. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's it. I think anything else you can think of with this? 
No, uh, I just think it's really nice that you don't like you don't have to go back and update all this stuff. You know, like if you don't want to or whatever, like you should. But it's just nice that you can just add that option. And it's just ready to roll with your old code. Yeah, and it and it's not like a linter like standard RB or anything could really detect that. Right. You know, maybe they could look for the word job inside of a block or whatever, but then oh, you might have sure. a, a symbol that calls a method and then it'd have to yep. be smart enough to parse that and know that, you know, it's got to look for That's the method true. of the same name and look for a job inside of that. And it's just not really true. something that you could detect easily with uh, some, you know, code analysis tooling or whatever. So yep. it's nice to have that built into rails itself to do the work of Definitely. that for you. So cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, this is great. Thanks for joining me on tuple. Uh, it makes it really easy to, dig into new stuff like this uh while we were recording we actually found a bug in rails so mm -hmm. we are gonna uh fix that but that was fun we were able to like record this go find this bug in rails when we were like eh, this isn't working the way we thought it was supposed uh -huh. to uh yeah. which turns out to be a bug in rails which should be fixed by the time that rails 7.2 final version comes out um but you know what tuple allowed us to figure that out work on debugging together if anybody is curious, um, the commit for this, I'm gonna bump up the code, uh, is interesting. So the configuration, why does GitHub have this little box? It's just traveling around in? with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's refresh and see if that goes, no? Nope, there. Nope. there it is. Hey, they just want that to be here, okay. Um, yeah. Weird. So yeah, basically the initializer for this option will check and see if there's a key and your initializers run probably after the rail tie for active job runs. And so you might have introduced this key, but it never set up the, um, the include properly or whatever, if you're upgrading um, from 7.1 or whatever. So yeah. this is going to end up getting rewritten so that it will run and check the um, the config for in queue after commit at the proper time. So what might happen is it ends up getting wrapped in a config after initialize block so that your initializers have time to go and set that configuration before this runs. This does. That's yeah. probably my solution for that. Not knowing, uh, not really understanding like why do we delete the value out of the config? in order mm -hmm. to assign it. Um, I'm kind of surprised by that, but it actually gets assigned to active job base as a class attribute instead of um, just being read from the Rails configuration, which is interesting. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure on why, you know, it's deleting the value. Why wouldn't you just leave it there? Maybe it's because this is the real place you should check for the current value of it. But either way, this stuff runs too soon, so it never actually gets executed with your initializer Option version that you of said, it. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll end up doing with this is recommending a config after initialize wrapper around this. Um, and hopefully that'll work, but it's possible this active job on load runs sooner or whatever. Right, uh, that's what I was going to say. That that's that's if, if this all yeah, works out as we think. If yeah. an initializer loads active job then base, then that would cause this to not work as well. Yep. So, it's kind of interesting. It might also make sense to effectively eliminate this and then just define this and set the value to the Rails application config active job in queue after yeah, transaction after, commit. Yep. Then, so it doesn't really matter uh, if it runs after the initializers or, or, or whatever. But in theory, we don't know when one or the other is going to work. So this might be something yeah. that we have to basically just tell the Rails core team, hey, this isn't loading it properly. We thought you could use a config after initialize. The other thing is what happens if active job gets loaded too soon? Too soon and right. we don't know. Yep. So yep. they might, they will probably have a recommendation on that, but I thought it was interesting to share because that stumped us as we were uh, recording this video and we're oh, like, yeah. Hey, we found a bug in rails, which is surprising. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it's also which, if you want to contribute to, to explore though. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We learned about how Rails loads active job now, how this thing is configured, the module that concern that it lives in. Um and then we were able to, you know, thankfully use tuple on this to debug because this is kind of a hard thing to hard poke one, around. Yeah, for sure. um, yep. And if I wasn't able to show you like the code I'm looking at, it would have been a, a nightmare. So oh, yeah, I would just be like, yeah, okay, sure, dude. If you yeah. say so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that is it for this episode. Uh, it's kind of our little bonus here at the end, uh, which I hope you found interesting. Um, we will see a commit soon in rails that fixes this and we'll figure out which is the, uh, right solution for it. Uh, cause at the moment I'm not entirely sure. And we yeah, that's might want really to just, to see. we might want to just poke around and, uh, see if we can fix this ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Cool. Excellent. Very Thanks cool. Thanks for joining me here on tuple. Uh, again, yeah. Thanks to Tuple for sponsoring this episode. Uh, we really can't live without them. It is a wonderful tool. Screen sharing, webcam. Colin can send me links in uh, in Tuple to open in my browser. Cool stuff yep. like that. Yep. We can have you know multiple people on here. I can ask him to go share his screen if we want to take turns and you know and go hang out with the water cooler. You know, yes. we need the to rooms like on. pairing lounge, stand up water cooler really kind of make our lives as remote, a uh, remote team, like feel a lot more like we're not so remote. Yeah, absolutely. And so much easier too, you know? And once again, thanks to Tuple for sponsoring this episode. Use code GORAILS at checkout to get 50% off your first three months and start pair programming with your team remotely as if you were in the same room together. It really makes a big difference for us as a team, and I know it will for you as well. So give it a try, and uh, we hope you enjoy it.